so yesterday already we have got an idea about this nonlinear dynamics at tipping points. And one thing actually we have noticed that the stochasticity is a very necessary condition for this tipping. So this is stochasticity can be uh, inherent, means intrinsic stochasticity or extrinsic ex stochasticity. And we will discuss in this lecture, both of them in detail. And you know the, the mathematics behind this stochastic process is a little bit different compared to the deterministic case. Why? This is because uh, basically in this stochastic process, we have to express everything, means every outcome or output in terms of some probability distribution function or their moments or different moments. So that is the different. Whereas in the, in the deterministic case, always you can describe a process by a differential equation this dynamical equation and the evolution of the dynamical equation that is basically the your the you can predict the future of that one so this stochastic process is actually more realistic compared to that one because it considers that the inherent correlation and uh, uh, basically the inherent correlation associated with that system and that's why uh, we are interested about that one So first thing actually, we should start from a very basic background. So the phenomena of diffusion. So you know, so all of we are aware about this diffusion. So when two miscible liquids actually come into contact, so they will mix and how long that mixing process will be happening. So until it reaches that equilibrium. So ultimately this, this kind of, this whole process, this, this is a macroscopic phenomena and this macroscopic phenomena was, uh, was of that time actually it was very interesting and a and lot of people are working, was working on, on, on that problem. And uh, initially pe people like Graham who actually uh, was working on that one and later Low Smith and uh, Fick. So who is the major person so who did this kind of work? So, so basically this, this whole macroscopic phenomena was actually described by a law and, uh, and ultimately it appears as a fixed law. So, all, so even at high school, actually we have learned that thing, what is fixed law. So it says that it is based on the two uh, law. So basically the first law is the, the flux is proportional with the, the gradient of the negative gradient of the concentration. So this, this, this one, and once you are imposing that the, this flux is negative gradient of that concentration. So then it always implies another conservation law. So it is kind of a implicit law. So, so, so that's why this another law also uh, uh, proposed. So that was the conservation law. So that is the, the rate of change of that concentration. So which is actually the negative, uh, basically the divergence of that flux, okay. <laughs> that one. So if you combine them together, so then you will be getting the, this diffusion equation and which is a, which always describe the micro, macroscopic phenomena related to that diffusion and all of we know that one. But the, the origin, the microscopic picture of the diffusion is very important. And, uh, and, uh, and this microscopic picture was actually, is, is based on this Brownian motion. So this Brownian motion is basically, when you do this kind of treatment, you will find that the based on this Brownian dynamics, you can arrive this diffusion equation. So that's why it gives you a clear cut idea that the, how this microscopic phenomena like this Brownian motion give, you, gives, you, uh, gives you this kind of diffusion phenomena. So once we are interested about this diffusion, diffusion of a uh, diffusion process, so then always we need to discuss, always we need to describe everything in terms of this Brownian motion. So this, uh, so, so, so this Brownian motion was actually this basically that Robert Brown actually started that work. So he started with this pollen grain and inserted in, in, in some water and he was actually watching that the, what is the movement of that. Uh, Brownian motion and he found that this motion of that Brownian particle, they are actually random and basically it is not uh, very much similar to that the microscope, this, uh, this uh, particle like basically it, 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 it is not a kind of a classical particle. So it has some, some unusual type of behavior and that behavior actually he was, inter he, was, he was trying to understand that phenomena, but it was very difficult that time to how to comprehend that particular phenomenon. So in so the, the the theoretical work was actually developed by these two people, so uh, Einstein and the Sumlochsky. So he was the mainly Einstein theory we'll be discussing here, and he was 
he was actually he was giving given a, he had given a very uh, uh, elegant uh, description of this brownian motion and from this from his theory we can actually see that the this ultimately this whole prob problem actually boils down to this to that diffusion equation so what about this einstein theory so it is actually based on these two assumptions the mo so first assumption is that this one this motion of each of the particle is independent of others this is first assumption and second assumption is that the movement of one and the same particle after different intervals of time must be considered as mutually independent process okay so these are the two uh, assumptions actually he made and once you made these two assumptions so then you can actually uh, basically based on these two assumptions actually one can uh, describe this whole phenomena okay so so le let us this describe one thing that is the uh, so we can imagine that the, these brownian particles are actually moving in the water or some fluid that kind of thing is there so there are n number of particles are there and we can we can imagine that the each of the particles are actually experiencing a, a displacement kind of a push so this delta amount of push so they are experiencing so if we if we know that the, how much this uh, this each of these particles are actually experiencing that much push so this is kind of a random variable and this random variable if you distribute so it you will be getting a distribution function so he imposes another condition that this phi delta this, this is the distribution function so this must be symmetric and this is the condition and this it must be normalized and that's why this within this uh, space so always it should be one so if we if we have a clear cut idea about this distribution function of this phi of this uh, basically this de delta of this de uh, this function delta uh, of this function phi so this distribution function so then we can get an idea that the what is the number basically the fraction number of particles which is basically the dn by n so that is the fraction number of particles those are actually experiencing a delta amount of push okay so that is the that is nothing but the phi delta multiplied by d delta so that is the that is the fraction number of particle that is experiencing a delta amount of push so so if we have such type of description so then we are mainly interested about the the how the probability density of this brownian particle the density of this brownian particles how are they evolving uh, over time so that is that basically we are interested about the how the distribution function is actually changing over time so that thing we are mainly interested and he was mainly interested okay as inverted okay so basically i should draw that picture that would be easy so so we are mainly interested about this one so this rho of xt how is it is actually evolving over time so rho of x e plus x uh, yeah x t plus tau here so that is the current density which we are going to relate with this rho at the density at the at time so this kind of relation we are actually looking for so that means actually you see that this density is evolving over time uh, through this kind of relations and we are looking for such type of relation okay so you know so that the this, this this particle we can imagine that they are actually moving in the three dimension means the, in the uh, in in in, a, in some fluid that is the three dimensional system and you know this x y z as are independent in nature so we can actually look for only the x coordinate how they are actually moving so if we consider this particle is uh, is uh, we, if we consider a region like this kind of region so this region we are considering in that fluid and this brownian particles are there and we are watching that the how they are actually moving so if the distance like this kind of distance if we consider that the delta amount of distance so this is basically the x direction so x direction and 
And if we consider that the, this particle which was present at the X and these are actually experiencing a delta amount of push so that actually it can reach to that place. And you can imagine that the, this three-dimensional model, this three-dimensional problem into a one-dimensional problem. Why? This is because actually the you can take the projection. Suppose this is the zigzag motion of that particle, that kind of thing is there. And but you can imagine that the if it is the x direction, so then the projection uh, of that dis displacement. So this in this delta in this tau time amount in this tau, uh, basically in this time interval tau. So they are actually experiencing a lot of zigzag motion. But ultimately, uh, after tau time interval, it is experiencing a distance like that, and that that is basically the delta hell. Okay, and so this this kind of thing actually we are showing there. So if we are, if we know that thing, so if we are, if we, if we know that kind of, uh, if we know this kind of how basically we are interested with the evolution of that uh, distribution function. So we can actually write down that the, this distribution function like that, how the uh, logic is like, uh, logic is the, uh, basically this uh, the distribution function at position X at T plus tau, which you can actually express in terms of that one. So why this is because this rho x delta, so that is basically the, the density at the time t, and if you are multiplied by this phi, so that means actually the fraction number of particle, those are experiencing a delta amount of push. So if you multiply them, so that would be the new distribution for those particles, those are experiencing a delta amount of push. So there are many such push in that region. So ultimately you need to take the integral over the space. So ultimately, this kind of relation actually you can express in terms of this phi delta. So that thing actually it is there. So now tau, now you can actually do the Taylor expansion in the both sides. And if you do this Taylor expansion on both sides, so then after expansion, actually you can take up to this one. And in the right hand side also you can take expand uh, 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 with respect to this delta. Here. So ultimately you will be getting this one. So you know, so this, this function, this phi delta is an even function already we have shown this one. So this is kind of a condition that we have imposed. Uh, so this phi delta is an even, fun uh, even function. So then this phi delta delta, so that will be zero. And whereas this one will be actually will, will exist. And, and this one also exists. So ultimately, so uh, and we are neglecting all the higher order terms. So ultimately, if we if we if we impose those conditions, so then ultimately you will be getting this row x, this one. Basically, this one is a normalization condition. So ultimately it will be one, and this is the even function. So ultimately it will be zero, and this will exist. So ultimately you will be getting this uh, div, uh, this equation, and where this d you can actually write in the integral form like that. So you see, so this functional form of this equation and the previous equation, the diffusion equation exactly same. And this is basically the diffusion equation where this diffusion constant is actually given by this integral. Okay, that one. So solution of this diffusion equation is quite easy. So if you, if you if, so basically you see that it is a open boundary problem. So X actually ranges from this minus infinity to plus infinity. So, and, uh, and you can actually solve this equation in, uh, in, uh, in Fourier space. So if you do this kind of Fourier transform on the spatial part, so then you can actually, uh, and with a initial condition, with, with an initial condition where you are considering that at x equal to zero, so all the particles are actually concentrated. So basically based on this initial condition with this open boundary means uh, x ranges from this minus infinity to plus infinity in that region. So if we, if, we, if, we, if, we, if we convert this equation in the Fourier space, so ultimately you will be getting a linear differential equation. So, and that equation actually is easy to solve and then you can take the inverse Fourier transform of that one. And finally, you will be getting the distribution function of that. So this is the distribution function. So once we get this distribution function for the particle, for the basically this is a distribution of this displacement, that thing we can get. So then we can actually do many other calculations. The Einstein actually was interested in the, what is the mean square displacement and mean square displacement actually you can calculate based on this, this, this uh, based on this P function. So which is nothing but this one, very simple. Yes. So 
if you if you if somebody is interested about this distribu uh, this uh, displacement so then uh, lambda x which is nothing but this x square x square root over of that one equal to yes that one we are interested so that is basically the mean square displacement uh, basically uh, basically mean square root of displacement that is basically the mean free path and this is basically the mean square displacement this x square this one so we are mainly interested about this one this delta uh, this x square and which is nothing but this one by n just very minus infinity to plus infinity x square f of x t dx okay this is the average so distribution function multiplied by this quantity ultimately you will be getting the average so that one so if we if we do this kind of averaging so by substituting that uh, function this distribution function ultimately you will be getting that final relation which i have already mentioned so ultimately you have you will be getting that the uh, this uh, this one this expectation of x square equal to 2 dt so this one so this is basically this is the einstein relation which was a very important relation and uh, and uh, and people also verified that relation <clears throat> and the expectation of that uh, position so that is basically zero okay so it follows this based on this distribution function you can actually get the mean and the mean square displacement so that is basically the this type of law so you see that that this you can you can interpret this result in that way so that the particles those are experiencing this kind of brownian motion where we cannot actually where we cannot describe that that what is the displacement and after tau time they are displacing that kind of delta x amount and which we can actually express in by this mean square displacement the square root of the mean square displacement that is basically the mean free path and which is which is not the velocity okay so if we divide with this dx this lambda x by dt so which is not the velocity but uh, but it is basically it is following this type of relation and in most of the in classical mechanics actually we know that the this displacement which is always the related with the t square not the t okay so that mean square displacement so that is basically the the square root of this mean square displacement which is basically the, the root over t dependence okay so that is the important difference compared to this classical uh, description of this particle motion that so now the thing is actually this particular this whole treatment of einstein which was described by this way so this is the integral form of this equation and there is no involvement of the um, uh, equation of motion but we are mainly interested about this equation of motion because we can we know the the classical formulation of this equation of motion and if we can describe this uh, thing this whole problem in terms of this equation of motion so then uh, basically we can do lot of calculation on that one so in that that time actually langevin uh, that the langevin's picture actually came into the uh, came, came into so what is that one so here you see that the, this particle experiencing a frictional force and also at the same time there is a random movement so this langevin approach was like that so this mx dot so that is basically the equation of motion so mx double dot so that is basically the this frictional force which is this one this stokes einstein relation by that way actually we can write and this extra random force is there if you imposing some external potential into that model and on that particle so suppose this this uh, this dynamics is happening under some external potential and this external potential you can actually describe you can add it and and that and finally that relation will be like that and where this external potential is the negative gradient of that potential so this potential actually describes that the what is the what type of system you are actually describing and even on the top of that potential there is some kind of random forces are there so so this is the this is the form of this langevin equation and keep in mind that the, this in the in, in in the previous description this delta this push that the delta amount of push that was actually independent in nature but here you see that this this random force and the displacement this x this position of the particle those are actually independent in nature okay so that is the that is the basic difference so this is basically the the kind of a description of this differential form of this kind of brownian motion but whereas in the previous case it was integral description of this uh, brownian motion that one 
So once we describe that, once we are actually, we want to solve some problem. So we want to, in, we are interested mainly how to get this kind of displacement, mean square displacement expression, which Einstein actually got based on this, uh, based on his treatment. So that one. So, so treatment is like that. So you can actually denote that the V by this X dot and multiply with this X and ultimately, so little bit algebra. So this is the random force and ultimately, uh, you will be getting that the, and taking the average of that one. And ultimately you will be getting this kind of relation. Okay. And since this one is actually, so it follows this particle always are in thermal equilibrium. So they're experiencing the, always it, this equipartition law always valid. So this kind of relation always hold. So if we solve it, so this relation, so ultimately you'll be getting this relation. This is a first order differential equation, very easy to solve. So our C is the constant and yeah. <laughs> And actually this frictional relaxation time is actually M by six by eight. So now you see that the, uh, if, we, if, we, if, we, if we consider that the T tending to infinity, so then ultimately uh, you will be getting that the, this, this term will be going to be zero and ultimately this relation actually will be getting. And this is the same form of this Einstein relation that we have got, that we have got based on this integral treatment. So higher, you see that the mean square displacement is nothing but the, the, uh, the square root of this mean square displacement has the square root of T dependence. Okay, so which already uh, Einstein actually discovered that. So this particular relation, so it means that, that the Langevin description works well. So which also describes this Brownian motion. So that is one thing. And also, so people like Perrin actually, he verified this relation. And uh, what, how, how the, he has verified that relation. So he actually uh, estimated the Avogadro number based on this relation. So ultimately, so he found that this Avogadro number based on this relation, it was like 6.85 into 10 to the 23. And it is actually very much close to that 6.0 to 10 to the 23. So it is a kind of a verification of that Avogadro number. So, so this, it means that this is Langevin description overall, whatever it is given and the Einstein treatment of this Brownian motion, it works well. And, uh, and basically this is kind of a foundational work for any kind of stochastic processes. Okay. So one important thing I just want to mention that the, in the last lecture, also basically we are, we are, we are talking about this non, uh, basically this non, the dynamic equations are non-linear in nature, but the non-linearity actually comes from this potential function. So whatever external potential you are imposing into that model, so ultimately this equation will be non-linear in nature. And this non-linear differential, this Langevin equation is very hard to solve. And most of the time we solve using numerical way. Okay, just keep in mind that. Okay. So, so now this formal description of this Langevin equation is like that. So this is the, this is the Langevin equation. So M dx d2x d2x uh, uh, d2x dt square equal to the frictional constant minus of frictional constant multiplied by this velocity plus this random force, this one. Where this, uh, this frictional force is actually related by that way, this Stokes-Einstein relation and like that. So, so when I'm describing in that way, so this means, that means actually this, we need to describe properly what is FT. So we need to define it. So this FT is a random force, that is true. And FT is independent of us, already we have discussed, but FT has some other uh, statistical properties like this mean of that FT, which is zero. And, uh, and it, is, it is actually delta function correlated. And delta function correlated actually we can write in that way. So if we are saying that, that this delta function correlated noise, Gaussian white noise, basically, if you take the Fourier transform of that one, this delta function always will be getting the constant. So that's why it is called the uh, white noise. So if we do that thing, so ultimately you will be getting, uh, uh, ultimate, ultimately actually, so this, this, this noise actually is Gaussian white noise. And if we include that noise into that model, so it always gives a markup uh, process. So that's why this, the description of that kind of uh, this, this dynamical equation that I have written here. So this is always actually, it evolves as a uh, basically markup process. So memoryless process you can imagine in that way. So one important thing that I want to mention that the, this frictional force, this, uh, this uh, Gta and this Ft, this random force, they are related. So they are related, how they are related. So basically it, there is a, a important theorem, which is called the fluctuation dissipation theorem. So this random, so you, you cannot actually, 
you cannot say that the yeah, arbitrarily we can increase that random force or yeah so basically this arbitrarily you can increase the random force it is actually dictated by the frictional force also so that is basically this uh, fluctuation uh, dissipation theorem so this fluctuation dissipation theorem actually what uh, what does it tell so it basically relates this this friction uh, this frictional force and the random force and it is like that so if we just take the integral of this correlation, this Ft into Ft plus of so this correlation over time. So then this correlation actually we can write in that one in that way. And, and this is the event function ultimately. And you can actually just integrate in the, so basically you can change the limit. And this one is nothing but this delta function. And ultimately it is one, uh, so the in integral of the delta function always one. So ultimately you will be getting that one. So this zeta equal to one by kt of integral of zero to infinite ft, ft plus tau dt. So this is basically, you see that the, this is a deterministic part, this frictional force, this constant, and this is the random force. So they are related and that is basically the fluctuation dissipation theory. So, so now the thing is, one in problem is associated with this uh, equation. So what is the problem? So this, this random force, the random force that we have in, included into that model. So that is a, that is a problematic situation. Why, what is what kind of problem is there? So this Ft already we have mentioned that this is delta function correlated delta function correlated noise. So if we are saying that the it is a delta function correlated noise, that means actually the even within a very small time, this time difference, this t minus t prime within that time uh, uh, within that uh, small time um, difference, this these two forces, this Ft and if Ft prime, so they are uncorrelated means they are independent in nature. So this kind of realization of such type of independent forces, even at small time scale is very difficult to comprehend. You cannot realize that one. So that's why that is one of the criticism people have found. Uh, and, and another problem is actually we have described this thing in terms of some differential equation, where this Ft is a all, Ft is also included there. So it means that the Ft is also differentiable quantity. But whereas this Ft is not a differentiable quantity, so that is the that is the major difference between this uh, basically this, for this kind of equation or, or how to write this kind of differential equation based based on this random force. So so this particular criticism was actually given by Dob, and uh, and uh, so basically so it, it, it was given by drop so so independent nature of this random force even at small time scale is very difficult to realize we cannot say in that way and second thing is actually um, yeah uh, so uh, <clears throat> so that that thing actually not possible to realize and second thing is uh, is uh, 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 yes this ft is actually delta function correlated yes that one and second, uh, yeah, so then this, this particular uh, thing actually came into the, uh, this Bob actually uh, criticized this kind of uh, problem. And ultimately, uh, he, he actually given a solution that the, instead of describing this equation by a differential equation, we can describe this equation as an integral equation. Okay, so so this this thing actually integral equations and the Langevin equation actually we can write in that form and where this this uh, this dBT is the increment. Okay, so this differentiability is not possible, but we can actually do this integ integ we can do this integration on it. So this this increment we are in including and ultimately uh, we are saying that this this these increments are independent mutually independent. And they and ultimately they follow a Weiner process. And this definition of this Weiner process I will be describing in the, in the next slide. So so how to do this integration? So this integration this is a stochastic differential equation. And this integration is not the way actually we will have learned in the in the high school or in undergraduate courses like that kind of thing. So so basically. Here we need to do so. Uh, uh, we need to multiply it with the continuous function like this Ft, and uh, and then we need to take the integration. So basically, if we do this multiplication of this Ft on this integral, and if we do so, then this integration bypass are possible, and we can actually write it in compact form. And if in this case we can take that the Ft equal to e to the power of beta t, and finally we can write this equation, this sol the solution of this equation in in that form. So basically, this is the kind of it. In this, whenever we are describing this Langevin equation in that way, that is also the description of the Langevin equation. This integral form of 
the Langevin equation. This is the integral form, or, or you can say that this is also a uh, description of this Langevin equation. Okay. So, so this this integration is possible. That is true. And uh, already we have described that the what is the uh, 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 this BT actually forms a Weiner process. And what is the Weiner process? So that also it is given here. So this xt be a so xt be a random variable and whose uh, basically I let x zero equal to zero and we shall assume the following. So these are the four properties: the displacement, this or the increment in the in the previous slide. Actually, we have written in that way. So xt minus xs, which is a Brownian particle, the displacement and this displacement is actually given by that one. Okay, and and the increment. Is is actually they are uh, increment uh, actually they are independent and follow the Markov process. Okay, and and the average of that increment so they are actually forming a um, uh, random uh, process so a random uh, process ultimately a mean of that uh, increment always be zero. And since we assume that the xt minus xs is the sum of the large number and it follows it follows uh, the basically based on this central limit theorem actually it follows in that way so we can write that the distribution function of that increment follows the gaussian distribution so so ultimately this is the description and if we if we describe this distribution function in that way so then its mean and the variance it will be like that so so this, this it means that the we whenever we are actually describing this Weiner process, it always actually follows all these properties. So, so that's why this Gaussian white noise always we describe whenever we are writing in that uh, whenever we are writing this Langevin equation in that form. So, so basically it comes from that it comes from that way. Okay. So so next thing actually it is uh, the Langevin equation, but uh, but here in this case, actually, what he has included this basically this Ornstein Uhlenbeck process. So in this process, actually, it is said that the, the every process is a Markovian stationary Gaussian. Uh, that is basically the Ornstein Uhlenbeck process. So what is that one? So in the previous case, in the Langevin equation, whenever we have solved the mean square displacement, we have seen that the it is a root mean square displacement is actually the square root of t dependent. Dependence is there. So, so that is a problem because you cannot actually differentiate this mean square displacement with respect to t. Okay, so that is a problem because if you do the differentiation, so ultimately t to the power half is will be coming, and ultimately in the denominator, this t to the power half will be appearing, and, and that is not possible to differentiate. Okay, we'll describe again this thing uh, later in a formal way. But here actually you can imagine that one. So that is basically root mean square is not differentiated. So this is the relation. So what I honestly will be basically he did not consider, uh, he actually he did not ignore that the this inertial term in the Langevin equation. So inertial term, what is that one? So this one, this m d2 square, dt m d2 square, d2 x dt square, that is the inertial term. In that, uh, this particular term actually he did not uh, ignore. So in this in this treatment, uh, in this Langevin treatment, actually they ignored that one. So you see that the whenever they are actually taking this average and taking the t, uh, t tending to infinity, so automatically this this uh, this, this thing this uh, this term will be going to be zero. So that is a big uh, that is that was the ignorance. So so that thing actually he did not ignore and he included that one and uh, and he actually uh, calculated the complete solution means calculate the mean square displacement of from that equation and finally he obtained this uh, this uh, this particular relation and you see that the, at t tending to zero at t equal to zero so this mean square displacement follows the t square dependence and t square dependence means actually it is uh, it is differentiable okay at t equal to zero so in the previous case it was not differentiable at t equal to zero so that was the kind of a problem he has found and ultimately he solved this problem in a two dimensional langevin equation and where he actually introduced a new variable velocity and this expression actually given by this way and that is basically in two dimensional space actually he solved this problem so this this kind of thing so the treatment, I'm not going into the deal. It is just a little algebra related to that one. So once you do this algebra, ultimately you'll be getting this final relation, this one. So one important thing, just few things I just want to mention that one, 
basically this if we if, if so basically this is the at t greater than zero so this one this kind of relation is there and if it is t tending to zero so then actually you will be getting the t square dependence because you need to actually expand this exponential form exponential function and ultimately you will be getting the t square dependence so one important thing that i just want to want to mention that the so whenever you are including this inertial effect so you are getting an extra term that is the minus one plus e to the power of minus beta t by beta. So that extra term, which is basically related to this colored noise. So in two dimensional space, so this colored noise actually you cannot generate in one dimensional space. Whereas actually if you include a, another extra variable and use this kind of understanding in the process, so ultimately it, it can generate this kind of uh, this colored noise. So this correlation between this uh, another import, this is another Another important result this correlation of this velocity is actually always the delta function is exponentially correlated and it is given by that one so one important thing you just notice that the t minus t prime which is basically the relative time which that's why actually it is called the stationary uh, uh, basically this uh, this correlation is stationary that means actually it means that the, the noise that we are including into the model so that is basically the gaussian white noise so that's why this it always evolve a probability distribution function which is not changing over time so because of that one okay so so ultimately you have uh, this velocity autocorrelation function gives a exponential correlation and this exponential correlation is always true even if we are not considering uh, this particle or any other thing so i'm saying that the so if it is a markov process like that kind of things so always it is a exponentially correlated and which was actually given by this ornstein wilbert okay so but somebody can ask one question that the yeah can we generate a, a noise which is not exponentially correlated so yeah so you can generate but the problem is actually very very hard to generate such type of noise but if you are considering in this framework like the markovian gaussian white noise so then always actually you the, you will be getting a you can generate this kind of noise which is exponentially correlated which is also a colored noise so that is also be possible uh, in that way but if you are if you are interested about this um there's some different noise so that is basically very much difficult to um, describe in this in this framework not possible yes so any question from there so i just okay uh, so one thing actually just so whatever we have discussed so far so we can give a formal de description of this stochastic process so 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 just it is a kind of so you know the, so far whatever we have described this brownian motion in terms of this particle but nowadays or uh, even actually this stochastic process is not limited only to that particle in nature a particle so it is actually applied in any branches of sciences and uh, so that's why just here I, I have given a formal description of this stochastic processes so definition of this bt means bt is the brownian motion of the stochastic process you can imagine in that way it satisfies this few relation so this uh, for s less than t uh, the increment bt minus bs this increment always be a gaussian uh, um, this gaussian distribution motion function whose mean is zero and the variance is t minus s okay so this is one uh, uh, one rule and bt minus bs so that is always independent of uh, bu which is basically the the bu that is basically the the value which is actually happened already in the past and bt is continuous in t and almost surely actually it is pathwise because in bt is always a continuous in t so so here you see that the, this i already mentioned that the, this dbt this bt is not differentiable why it is not differentiable this is because actually what is the basic definition of the differentiability so you know that the function at if you are increasing a little bit hello this is h so increment so if you if you take the difference and the divide with this h value so that is basically and if you take the limit this h tending to zero so that is the differentiability so now this is still it is a stochastic uh, uh, variable so if you add and all you can you can apply this first rule so this is a, also a random number so ultimately it will be following this gaussian white noise and ultimately its mean will be this one and the increment will be the 
uh, this value that will be the h and you know this uh, this uh, in the denominator there is h and it is actually entering into the variance and entering into the variance that means actually you have to in, it will enter as a h square so ultimately you will be getting that the this distribution function of this kind of random variable that will be the uh, uh, ng zero we mean zero and the and variance will be the one by h so if you take the limit h tending to zero so then it will be it will divert so basically you see that the distance travel from one point to another point is infinite so distance travel from one point but which is not true so distance travel from one point to another point is infinite which is not true so that's why this point this bt this d this bt is not a differentiable quantity so that's why you have to be careful so why this dobbs interpretation is important and also later actually or some other uh, basically if, if we cannot differentiate it so we can actually integrate it already we have described in terms of the dobbs interpretation so here also we can actually describe in that way in the, in terms of this e2 and and some other integral the straton which this kind of thing so you know so the here we just want to give a uh, basic idea why how does it work so suppose you know the basic form of this integral so this is the kind of a x dx equal to x square by 2 so that is kind of a riemann integral you know all of you so so but the stochastic integral like that you cannot actually write in that way so bt dbt it is not like that the bt square by 2 it is you cannot write it so why this is because so you just take a look in this at this picture that the in the riemann integral you know so that the if you take any of this point if the function is continuous if you take any of this point in this uh, uh, on this curve so and ultimately you you, you can actually if, if, and if you take this integral into a summation so ultimately you will be getting the exactly the same then but in this case so you can take any point okay for this integral but if you if it is a stochastic integral you can actually choose one value of this uh, this one so ultimately you will be getting a different results okay that is the that is the problem so 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 we can actually write this summation by this integral in that way and if the if this difference is like that so if you take the t i plus 1 so that is you will be getting a different result if you take the midpoint so that you will be getting the another result and if you take the this uh, this another uh, uh, this value so then you will be getting another result so what the problem is actually the calculating this summation is a little bit tricky okay you cannot actually it is very hard to calculate the summation of this this uh, this, uh, this, uh, this this quantity you cannot do it so but if, if we cannot do it we can actually we can do the, uh, the we can take the expectation of that quantity we can take the expectation of that quantity and if you can use the some of the properties of this uh, expectation operator this expectation so ultimately this linearity and some power property and some other property if you apply so ultimately you will be getting this expectation value equal to zero okay so that is the important message that i just want to give so this expectation of that quantity is zero uh, and why you are doing so we are we are not interested about to integrate that one because that is hard problem so we are taking the uh, expectation of that one so if we take the expectations ultimately it will be zero and which is not the v square by 2 so it, it, it is clear to that one so so therefore actually it appears that the this this uh, this quantity this bt this integral of this bt dbt which is has a zero mean so this is this quantity has a zero mean so we can we can we can actually take this kind of thing in another way suppose yeah if we are doing we know that the purposefully we know that this is wrong but still we are trying to calculate the expectation of this quantity the expectation of that quantity if we calculate so then it, it is uh, it, it will be giving you that the uh, it is basically b square by t b, b, bt square by 2 that will be the integral uh, that will be the in integrated from the direct integration we are doing and taking the in taking the expectation of that one and you know so this is the bt square that means actually it is a related to the variance and variance that is basically the t and ultimately it will be giving you the t by 2 that one so 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 it means that the, this this the expectation that the way we have thought this bt square the way, usual way of writing this integ integral so that is not the correct one because in the previous case the way actually we have used we have we have done this calculation that was giving you this integral the mean of that integral was zero but in this case it is giving that the it is giving you 
it is giving you the, this kind of quantity, this is T by two. So certainly this is not the correct way of doing this kind of integer. Okay, that is, that is clear. So now the thing is actually, so if we take, so just I've written in, a, in, a, in, a, in that way, so that is the, so what is the exact value of that integral? So exact value of that integral is like that. So if we take the, if we take this uh, BT, this one, so B, uh, BT, DBT, so if we take the initial value, this TI, so then this integral value will be giving you the BT square by two minus T by two, so that is the E2 integral. And if we take this, uh, this uh, midpoint, so that will be giving you the BT2 square by T, and if we take this one, this extreme one, so that will be giving you this kind of, so this one is called the E2 integral, this one is called the Stratonovich integral, and this one is called the backward integral. So, so we are not going to do this kind of these two integrals. So, because the calculations are a little complicated, but you can actually take a look at the how this e two integral works. So, just for example, so here we have taken that the uh, this uh, arbitrary function this f x. Okay, and if we if we do the Taylor expansion of that one, so this d of f. So, just Taylor expansion of that one. So, ultimately, you will be getting this one. So in this case, actually, we have already mentioned that the, this integral of bt, we can actually write in that bt square by two. So that's why purposefully we have chosen a function that the fx f equal to x square or x equal to bt. Okay, so just substitute this one. And in this case, already we know that the dBT square equal to dt because that already uh, obtained from this Einstein relation. So mean square displacement or the, or the displacement of this stochastic variable is actually proportional with the time. So we, are, we know that the dBT square is proportional with the dt. So we can actually replace that one. So if we replace that one and neglect all the higher order terms, Ultimately, you will be getting this type of relation. And if you if you if you integrate it in that way, so basically this one automatically it will be giving the t by two, and this one ultimately this integral actually you can write in this form that is bt two square by two minus t by two. So this is basically the e two integral. It does work in that way. So so the the idea is like that. So whatever functions you have, if you are if you have a stochastic process, so you need to do this uh, uh, Taylor expansion, and wherever you are finding that the db square. So then in that place, actually, you need to put that the dt. So we have discarded up to, uh, we have taken up to db square and discarded all the higher order term. Why? This is because, you know, in the Riemann integral also, you know that it works in that way. So I have written that one or not? So in the in the Riemann integral also we know that the if we are doing this kind of in, if we are if you are taking the integral of that function so you will be getting the f x and why we actually discard that one we know that the d x is small and the higher order terms always be even smaller we can actually discard so that's why you always take the first order term so in this case in the stochastic process actually you cannot actually ignore the uh, you, you can you, you cannot ignore from the second order because dx square you cannot ignore because db square is actually a, is is basically the dt so you cannot ignore that term so if we if you are not ignoring that term ultimately it will be giving you the this term and after that actually d dq which is it includes that the db square which is basically the square root of t multiplied by the db so it is basically you can ultimately it will be giving you the t to the power three by two that term and t to the power three by two, which is actually more than one. Okay, so this, uh, this uh, order of the t, that is basically the uh, more than one. So it is even actually smaller. So you can actually discard from there. But, uh, but in the, in the, uh, in the Riemann integral, actually you can discard from the x square, from that x square term. So you really don't, you really don't care about the, the what are the higher order term. So that is the basic difference. So if you include that one, automatically you will be getting this uh, result. Okay, so that is always keep in mind that one. Even that uh, for solving this stochastic differential equation, also you need that information. Okay, so more on integral. So I'm not going into the details that one. So last thing actually just want to, how to solve a differential equation, the stochastic differential equation. Just uh, this is the last slide. Okay, so, <clears throat> So you know that the usual way of solving a differential equation, that is we know, so the dxt equal to this one. So if we solve this differential equation, we know the initial condition, if we know, we can actually give, get, the, get this result. Very simple, very usual way of writing this one. 
But in this case, stochastic differential equation, what is the basic difference? As I already mentioned that the, this is the drip term and this is the diffusion term. And this, this quantity is not differentiable quantity. So how to solve this kind of problem, how to, how to get a solution of this kind of stochastic differential equation. The strategy is very simple. Simple actually given by this E2. So we are, so in the, we are, we are, we are, we have a function and we are actually expanding that function in terms of this Taylor's expansion. So Taylor expansion, and we have taken up to second order. Already we have mentioned in the previous slide that the, we, we are going to consider only the second order term. So this dx square term. So we have taken up to second order term and after that we have discarded all the other terms. So we have taken a, we have so basically just take a look. This is a stochastic process where this dxt equal to uh, dx uh, x, uh, basically this one. Ultimately, this describes a, um, ultimately, this describes a geometric Brownian motion. Okay, so this xt is actually multiplied there. So I've taken basically the uh, solution is actually a little easier. That's why I've chosen. But you can do that exercise for any, uh, any stochastic differential equation. The idea is like that. So if we know this dxt by xt, that is basically this one, and ultimately this this thing actually we can describe in that way. And this dx by dxt by xt, that is basically the log xt. And if we take the differentiation of this fxt and the fxt, which is log x, so ultimately one by x and minus one by xt square. And if we substitute into there, so ultimately you will be getting this relation, okay. And if we expand it and wherever you are finding that the dvt, dvt square, so in that place, you need to place that the dt, okay. So if we put in that way, uh, uh, ultimately you will, be, you will be getting a solution like that. And, the, and the, the solution of this stochastic differential equation in the Ito sense will be like that one, okay. So, so I'm saying that the, so by that way, actually you can solve the stochastic differential equation, which is a little bit different compared to the ordinary solving of this ordinary differential equation. And just keep in mind that one, okay. Yes. So I think for the first part I'm done. So yeah, if you have some questions and uh, yeah, so feel free to ask any type of question. It will be giving you the different result. Okay, so but both of the integrals has different use. But uh, but here I am saying that the it is difficult. It is easy to demonstrate. That's why I have I have used. So depending on the problem, actually you have to choose which type of integral you are going to use. It depends on the system and depending on the problem. Any other question? <laughs> 